I'm practicing Pi Bullet. It's a cool Python package to make a 3D graphical user interface where robots like R2D2 can be tossed around. During the pandemic, if I've wanted to learn something, the best way to devote myself to the task has been by making a talking squid video. So here's a talking squid video. <laughs> Thanks to PyBullet, R2D2 here only takes a few lines of Python to toss around. This is actually the first example you find on PyBullet's tutorial linked in the description. But I added a samurai arena and a teddy bear. As silly as this looks, PyBullet is what actual roboticists use at the Okinawa Institute of Science and Technology. So let's try using PyBullet to illustrate the predator slash prey scenario I proposed in my application to OIST. But let's build up to that. First, notice we can click and drag R2-D2's little arm here. R2-D2 isn't just a 3D object, he has moving parts. R2-D2 comes from a Universal Robot Description Format file, URDF. There are seven kinds of moving parts in URDF. Let's take a look at them, even though my predator-prey scenario doesn't involve joints at all. This first red pole has a fixed joint. When I click and drag, the pole stays right here. This second red pole has a continuous joint. When I click and drag, the pole rotates around the object it's connected to. I can whoosh it all the way. This third red pole has a revolute joint. When I click and drag, the pole rotates, but it has limits. I can't whoosh it all the way. This fourth red pole has a prismatic joint. When I click and drag, the pole slides. This fifth red pole has a spherical joint. When I click and drag, um, well, I'm not completely sure what it's doing. It seems like the prismatic joint, but in two dimensions, maybe? This sixth red pole has a planar joint. When I click and drag, it flies away, okay? This seventh red pole has a floating joint. When I click and drag, nothing happens, even though I thought this would be the one flying away. Hmm. So I've certainly got more learning to do. But these first four joints seem usable enough. Let's make a robot. This fellow has a prismatic joint, which can move up and down. Then it has a revolute joint, which can tilt this far left and right. Finally, it has a continuous joint to spin this paddle around. Clicking on these joints myself, let's give R2-D2 a spanking. Okay, with that done, let's move on to Predator and Prey. I've added color to this map I made. I built this arena in PyBullet by turning every pixel into a cube. But I can pick up these cubes and throw them around. I don't want to do that. I want the map to stay the way it is. So I set Use Fixed Base to True. Now the cubes don't move at all. Next, I place two spheres in the arena at random. Let's give them eyeballs using the cameras in PyBullet. By providing position, orientation, and a few parameters, I can actually get pictures of these spheres from above. This is the predator and the prey. Or they will be someday. I want the spheres to use their observations to chase or run from each other, but for now I'm animating them myself. One of my inspirations for this scenario was the book Rendezvous with Rama by Arthur C. Clarke. You should read it, it's pretty cool. But it's been a while since I read it, so I'll be referencing Wikipedia. A weird space object gets Earth's attention. Scientists fly to it, climb into it, and explore a bizarre alien world. They meet aliens, which are hybrid biological entity and robot eventually termed a biot. Writing about these aliens and reading about them gives a sci-fi chance to think about consciousness. These Ramans do everything in threes. 
There are three books in the series, and they have three eyes so that they can see in 360 degrees. These cameras I made are okay, but I think I can do better than that. Voila! These agents both have four cameras facing the four cardinal directions, each of which captures 90 degrees of the world around them. I'm using four eyes instead of three, but I think the Ramans would still appreciate this. I love the concept of 360 vision. One of my earliest videos on Thinkster was about 360 vision. But maybe Pred and Prey would be more interesting without it. What if I chopped off one Raman's worth of eyes? What if the prey and predator can only look in one direction? and they have to pick that direction in addition to picking their own movement. I'm done keeping a leash on them and whipping them around. These spheres are quote-unquote thinking for themselves. Both of them have neural networks which run their visual memory through convolution, then runs all of their memory through recurrence. Both spheres here are turning their recollections of the past into their expectations for the future. I think my next math or data-themed Talking Squid video will be about reinforcement learning, and I'll try to get these agents to actually chase each other. If I can fit Friston's free energy principle in there, that'll be my OIST proposal completed already. I think. It's all I do here at Thinkster. Bye bye By the way, I've got a Patreon at patreon.com slash thinkster. I want to thank all these squidlings and elder squids. Thanks. <laughs>